Take across our area yesterday ruined cars, homes, and a multi million dollar construction project. The extent of the damage coming up. The 87th Texas legislature will meet for a special session. It starts tomorrow. What lawmakers have on the agenda. But first, we're going to start off our newscast with some late breaking news. San Antonio police now looking for a missing two year old. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus tweeted out a couple of hours ago asking for help in finding this little boy. Here he is, two year old Caden Stutzman. He was last seen near West Avenue and Blanco Road on the north side of town. Anyone with information on his whereabouts asked to call the number up there on your screen, 210-207-7660. Again, that number, 210-207-7660. And we have more late-breaking news from the federal courthouse, where a judge has ruled that the Air Force is mostly to blame for the shooting at Sutherland Springs Church in 2017 that left 26 dead. In his ruling, Judge Javier Rodriguez said the Air Force is 60 percent to blame, saying it failed to enter Devin Kelly's 2012 court martial information into an FBI database. That criminal history would have prevented him from legally purchasing firearms used in that shooting. He went on to write that the trial held earlier this year, quote, established no one, not even Kelly's parents or partners, knew as much as the United States about the violence that Kelly had threatened to commit and was capable of committing. Now a trial will be held to determine what damages should go to the victims' families. You can read the entire opinion right now on our website, KSAT.com. Yesterday, we brought you coverage of the flooding across our area. Today, people all over Bear County are still dealing with the impact of that rain. Our Max Massey showed us all the flooding near Leon Creek and Highway 90 and tells us it didn't just shut down an access road, but a multi-million dollar construction project in that area. I'm frustrated. Kim Brown usually uses this access road to get to her apartment complex. She's lived here for three years. She's seen flooding before, but nothing like this. No, usually it's, it's not like this. So we can leave, come back, and the water's down. And it looks like it's going to be a while before this road is drivable again. We are seeing extensive damage, including the guardrail being ripped off the frame, now lying across the road. We see the asphalt torn from the ground and still the water flowing under this access road and flowing fast. It's not just drivers and local residents being affected. There's a big San Antonio water systems project underway. A representative from Saul's tells me this is their W6 project at Highway 90 in Leon Creek, and it was inundated by Leon Creek floodwaters. It filled the project pit and the tunnel. We saw two holes fill up via trans guide yesterday and water spraying into the air. Contractors equipment was also stuck and carried in that flooded area. One of the crews here telling me they lost more than a million dollars worth of equipment. Through today, we saw crews collecting what was swept away in those floods. We're also told this is an expensive project. The W6 upper segment is under construction for $167.7 million. The plan is that this project will replace 54 inch sewer mains with approximately five miles of 104 inch sewer pipe. The idea is that this will replace the aging infrastructure that conveys more than 90% of the city's western sewer shed's total flow to the treatment plant. Important to mention, though, this overflowing water on the road is flood water, not sewer water. I'm told there will be a project delay, but that timetable is up to contractors. As for Kim and this access road, she has one request. Come fix it, please. <laughs> Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. I'm sure that statement is being said all over the area, but looks like they are going to get a little break. Uh, yeah, nice to see a little bit of blue sky out there. And for the rest of the day, I think we're going to see the clouds come and go. So maybe at times overcast, but then you may get a few peaks of sun in there. And we are going to carry a chance for some passing showers throughout the day. Now, in case you missed it, here's where Leon Creek wound up cresting yesterday at 25.79 feet. That's its fourth highest uh, crest in history. Now we turn our attention to some river flooding downstream the San Antonio River under a flood warning here. This portion in 
and green from Elmendorf all the way down through Floresville down to right about Falls City. This flood warning will be in place until tomorrow. Uh, we have seen the river crest near Elmendorf this morning, right around 39 feet. It will start to fall this afternoon and this evening, but we could see some minor flooding around Floresville tonight and tomorrow. And I'll have that for you coming up just uh, in just a little bit. So for the next few days today, heaviest rain will be down near the coast. A few showers here in town Thursday into Friday. More pockets of heavy rain, mainly south and east of San Antonio. And finally, as we get into the weekend, rain chances really starting to become more isolated and will start to warm up a little bit more. A live look at radar and your whole forecast coming up in just a bit. Guys. Thank you, Katie. New at noon, we ha now have the name of the person who was killed at that nail salon shooting earlier this week. 46-year-old Ryan Vo shot and killed in the 11900 block of Blanco Road on Monday afternoon. Police say it started as an argument between Vo and 42-year-old Kit Win at the Cozy Nails Salon. The argument, though, turned violent. Win shot Vo. He has been charged with murder as well as aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Also new at noon, police have arrested a man. They say shot and killed another man last month. This is 58-year-old Leopoldo Mora. Police say he killed 57-year-old Kenneth Salazar at the Paradise Motel in the 4900 block of West Commerce. That's on the city's west side. Moore got away, but police were able to use fingerprints found at the scene to find and arrest him at his apartment yesterday. He is facing a charge of murder. And another big news story today, Governor Greg Abbott has announced the official agenda for the upcoming special session of the 87th Texas Legislature. That session is going to cover 11 topics. They include election integrity, border security, social media censorship, bail reform, as well as funding for Article 10. The session will also cover topics such as transgender youth in sports, critical race theory, and teacher retirement benefits. The session starts tomorrow morning at 10 and will continue through the month of July. A man is in the hospital today after he was shot early this morning on the city's east side. It happened at 9 o'clock last night in the 4800 block of Lord Road. That's near MLK Drive and 410. Right now, police don't have much to go on, but here's what we know so far. Investigators tell us there was a shootout between two people. At some point, the victim was shot in the stomach. The suspect, though, took off and the victim taken to the hospital. Now police are trying to figure out how it all happened and who is responsible. And San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers need your help finding a woman who they say is responsible for a robbery at a convenience store. It happened on the city's north side, and it happened around noon on Sunday, June 6th, in the 4700 block of San Pedro Avenue. Police say the woman walked into the Max Mart store and demanded several items from the clerk. When the employee refused, the suspect threatened him. The woman then ran off after the clerk gave her the items. If you have any information that could lead to an arrest, you have to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You could get up to a $5,000 reward. Microsoft urging users to update their devices as soon as possible. Still ahead, why they say this update is urgent. And game one of the NBA Finals tipped off last night. The Bucks had a surprise starter, but the Suns were hot. Highlights coming up in sport. First responders in Surfside, Florida, still desperately digging through the rubble of that condo complex, but hope for survivors is fading. After the break, we're going to tell you how Tropical Storm Elsa is impacting this search. One, what was once Hurricane Elsa now making landfall north of Florida's Gulf Coast as a tropical storm, packing winds of up to 65 miles an hour. The site of that condo collapse in Surfside spared a direct hit, but rain from the outer bands of that storm still impacting the search and re rescue effort there. More than 100 people are still unaccounted for. Ten more victims were found earlier today, the death toll rising to 46. ABC's Faith of Ube has details. Angry rains lashing Cedar Key. Florida under a state of emergency as gusty winds from Elsa violently whip everything in its path. Cars drowning in already flooded areas. I'm trying to protect the house from getting flooded. Heavy downpours from the storm adding to the challenges rescuers face as they dig through the rubble for more victims of the Surfside condo collapse. Officials say they've embedded a meteorologist among the rescue workers, giving them up to the minute life-saving updates on the severe weather threat. Tuesday, workers pausing briefly for lightning. This is to protect 
the safety of our first responders. They resumed as soon as it was safe to do so. Nearly two weeks after the collapse, officials say the chances of pulling more survivors out of the rubble are dwindling. You know, unfortunately, we're not seeing anything positive uh, that continues in, in that sense. You know, the, the key things we're looking for uh, all throughout in regards to voice space, livable spaces, you know, we're not coming across that. But the Cohen family is praying those voids do exist in the pile. The kids praying their father, Dr. Brad Cohen, and uncle, Dr. Gary Cohen, are still alive somewhere in the debris. I'd say, hang on, we're going to try everything. I think to Hillam, doing the news, to find you. So just hang on and keep praying. And in the meantime, the mayor of Surfside says starting today, there'll be letters going out to oceanfront condo associations and building owners detailing basic steps they need to take to ensure their buildings are safe. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Outside with live cam, we're starting to dry up a little. The waters are starting to recede a little, but there's still a chance of some more stuff. Yeah, we certainly could have some more passing showers and non-severe storms, not only today, but for the next couple of days. By far, though, the heaviest, most widespread rains and flooding rains will be down closer to the Gulf Coast, and we'll take a look at that shortly. Just in the past 24 hours, though, the aquifer is up more than one foot. We do love to see that, and of course, with the rains, we expect elevated mold levels. Molds are still high today with a count of around 6,300. We'll be right back. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. You know, we saw that story from Max Massey a while ago and he was showing what was left over there at Leon Creek. And I'm still amazed at the powerful amount of force that water has. And yeah, why picked you don't up drive in trailers it. and just moved them along the, the highway there. Um, yep. We're very lucky that we, from, to my recollection, did not have any serious injury or fatality related to that flash flooding yesterday. That is that is very true. That's some good news. I think now the focus for flash flooding issues, dangerous flash flooding is going to be down closer to the Gulf Coast. That's where we're starting to see more flash flood warnings pop up this afternoon, especially around the Rockport and Fulton areas. We'll get to that. I want to get you kind of the big picture here, both cloud cover Rain and temperatures. Check out our temperatures. 80s and 70s. Don't always see that in July, do you? Uh, as far as satellite and radar goes, extensive cloud cover across the area. As I mentioned, the clouds will come and go. It could be overcast at times. And then maybe you see a few peaks of sun throughout the course of the afternoon. Uh, rainfall in and around San Antonio, the metro area. We've got a few little showers skirting in from the east here. They're moving pretty quickly. And this rain is not terribly heavy, so that should not cause any flooding issues. But some showers off and on will be possible for the rest of the day. Now, the more widespread, consistent rain that is starting to cause some flooding issues is down closer to the Gulf Coast. There's Highway 59. A lot of this has been southeast of Highway 59 so far today, down to the Texas Gulf Coast. Those green boxes you see there, those are flash flood warnings. So that's where we've got flash flooding uh, ongoing or likely already occurring. And that is in this area of a high risk for excessive rainfall or flooding rainfall today. That's that bright pink or purple area, and that will be down closest to the Gulf of Mexico. As you work farther inland, the risk for flooding rainfall starts to taper off just a bit. So for us here in San Antonio, we're anywhere from a one to two on a one to four scale, but by far flash flooding issues will be more likely down closer to the Texas Gulf Coast. Uh, not only today, we could also see this extend into the next couple of days as well. Uh, that's also where we've got a flash flood watch posted until Friday morning at 7 a.m. Counties in green here, that includes Carnes County, DeWitt County, Lavaca County, down to B County, Goliad as well. You could see an additional one to three inches of rain through Friday morning with some isolated pockets of four to six inches. This is over very saturated ground already, so we'll likely see more flash flooding issues here over the coming days. Here's how things stand currently. Again, a couple of flash flood warnings ongoing there. We've got a low pressure system spinning counterclockwise right over South Texas. It's not moving very fast and we're starting to see these bands of very heavy rainfall set up and almost become stationary. That's why we're going to see those flash flooding issues down closer to the Gulf Coast. So unfortunately, and essentially anywhere along the Texas Gulf Coast from Brownsville all the way over to Houston and Southeast Texas, 
is not necessarily uh, very good beach weather if you've got folks vacationing there uh, this week. So center of this low pressure system is right near Corpus. It's going to weeble wobble a little bit over the next couple of days, but generally hang out to our south as we get into Thursday and Friday. So that's going to keep a scattering of rain in the forecast. Keep in mind higher rainfall totals and more widespread rain down closer to the Gulf Coast for us here in town. A 40% chance of some scattered rain that will continue to toss us some showers over the next couple of days. Finally, that low pressure system washes out this weekend, but nonetheless will hold on to some low end chances of isolated showers and storms all the way through early next week. But the potential for flooding rain down near the coast that's really going to hang on until the end of the work week Friday, and that'll start to ease up this weekend. So here in San Antonio today, 30% chance of a passing shower through 2 o'clock, 40% chance later on this afternoon. Maybe a few rumbles of thunder here or there, and keep in mind that cloud cover will come and go today. With the clouds and the rain, we'll stay in the 80s this afternoon and for the next couple of days. As rain chances start to taper off this weekend, our high temperatures will jump back into the low 90s. That's still very seasonable for this time of year. Guys, thank you so much, Katie. Still coming up, the Suns get a boost from a seasoned veteran, and rumors have it the Spurs could be making a deal with L.A. The NBA Finals opened up last night in Phoenix. Suns hosting the Bucks. There was kind of a surprise. Giannis Antetokounmpo, doubtful in the morning, questionable during the day. Then he started game one last night. Remember, he had that hyperextended knee. His leg looks pretty good early. Powers past DeAndre Aiden down the baseline. Jam, 8-5. Is what he had and start with Giannis. Not a bad night, but the Suns score late in the frame. Tori Craig gets to follow. Phoenix up 30 26 after one second quarter. Giannis with a display of hustle. It's the chase down block. Incredible play. Apparently his knees feeling pretty good, but the Suns are still up 57 49 at halftime. We go to the third quarter. Chris Paul dominates. First, he finds Aiton for the alley oop slam. Suns up 14. Then Paul with the step back three pointer. Doing it all, Phoenix gets the lead to 19. They're up 92-76, heading into the fourth. Milwaukee gets it down to single digits. Former Spur Brent Forbes knocks down the three, and suddenly it's a nine-point game, but the comeback didn't last. Devin Booker hits a three. The Suns back up by double digits. Phoenix takes the game one, and the series lead 1-0. The final from game one is 118-105. I saw the shots they were giving me, and I was just missing them. So I just kept trying to be aggressive. My guys got going, and... Campaign and all the coaches been talking about us playing with pace. Yeah. I'm the old head that like to slow it down sometimes, but uh, in this series we got to play with pace. Yeah, he played with that pace. 16 in the third, 32 for the game for him. Game two coming up tomorrow night once again in Phoenix at eight o'clock. Game three and four are back in Milwaukee Sunday. Check the time. It's an early start time on Sunday at seven, and then next Wednesday game four at eight live right here on KSA 12. Hey, the rumor mill is cranked up when it comes to Spurs and DeMar DeRozan. Los Angeles Lakers have their eye on DeMar. It would be a sign and trade deal. That's according to NBA analysis.net. The Spurs can negotiate a new contract to DeRozan before August 1st for four years, almost $150 million. If not, he becomes an unrestricted free agent on August the 2nd. According to USA Today, the Lakers could offer forward Kyle Kuzma, center Montrell's Herald, and the number 22 pick in this year's NBA draft, the latter of which would be very attractive for the Spurs. So that's one way to get DeMar DeRozan what he wants rather than lose him altogether. Sign him and then trade him. Good idea. Good deal. All right, coming up next, Microsoft users. Stand by. You're being urged to update your software immediately. We're going to tell you why in the next half hour. And also in the next half hour, a new movie that's part romantic comedy and part action adventure thriller. We'll give you a first look at the movie First Date in the Spotlight. We are taking a look now at an alleged shooting plot that happened in Chicago over the holiday weekend. Police took a man into custody after they say that they found weapons and ammunition in his hotel room. ABC's Alex Perez tells us they believe that he intended to fire at 4th of July crowds. 
Authorities here in Chicago are breathing a sigh of relief. Investigators have arrested 32-year-old Keegan Castile. They say a member of the housekeeping staff discovered a rifle, five rifle magazines, and another firearm near the windowsill of the room Castile was staying at on the 12th floor of the W Hotel in downtown Chicago. Now, that room overlooking busy Lakeshore Drive, Navy Pier, and several beaches, all of which were crowded with people celebrating the 4th of July. Authorities believe that quick thinking housekeeper may have helped them avert what could have been a massacre. Castile did not have a fire owner's ID and has been charged with two counts of aggravated unlawful use of a weapon. Authorities say Castile is from Iowa, but they're still trying to figure out what exactly he was doing here in Chicago. But of course, officials on high alert for incidents like this ever since that terrible shooting in Las Vegas back in 2017. Alex Perez, ABC News, Chicago. Some other big stories today. Haitian President Jovenel Moïse is dead today after he was attacked in his home. Prime Minister Claude Joseph said in a statement that Moïse was shot and killed early this morning. He was 53 years old and elected as president in 2017. He was set to face re-election later on this year. His wife Martine also shot in that attack. She has been hospitalized. Her condition is currently unknown. Those assassins, described as a group of individuals who spoke English and Spanish. Employers all over the United States have posted a record high number of job openings for the second straight month. This comes as the economy recovers, creating an intense demand for workers. According to the U.S. Labor Department, there were 9.21 million job openings in the month of May, the highest in recorded history. Experts believe the increase comes as workers are leaving lower paying jobs for better paying positions at other companies. Last week alone, employers added over 850,000 jobs nationwide. Looking outside with live cam, uh, we are getting a break from the rain, not from the clouds, it appears. <laughs> and our temperatures are kind of low, too. Oh, my gosh. Can you... Uh, this is an odd sight for uh, for this time of the year, that's for sure. I don't think uh, a lot of us are complaining, especially about the temperatures. We're in the 70s and 80s across the board this afternoon. 79 at the airport, 85 in Catula. Also, 79 up in Kerrville. Our winds are out of the northeast at around 14 miles per hour. We'll carry a decent breeze today. That wind direction is because of an area of low pressure that is down closer to the Texas Gulf Coast, producing a lot of flooding rain there. So this afternoon, and this evening we'll likely see our temperatures jump into the mid to upper 80s, depending on how much blue sky we can squeeze out this afternoon. 30 to 40% chance of a passing shower or non severe storm here around San Antonio and Bear County. We've got a couple of little showers working in from the east this afternoon. If you do get any rain, it's likely to be fairly short lived and on the lighter side. Now that is not the case down closer to the Texas Gulf Coast. We've got a swath of some heavier rain all the way from the Highway 59 corridor. So Beville over to Victoria and then south toward the Gulf of Mexico. Very, very heavy rain falling across parts of the Gulf Coast, especially north of Corpus Christi. There's actually a flash flood emergency until 245 for parts of uh, Aransas County there, including Rockport and Fulton. This very heavy rain is in some instances nearly stationary there down near the Gulf Coast because of that area of low pressure. We'll talk about how that low pressure will move over the next couple of days and what that means for your forecast looking ahead to the weekend coming up just a bit later on in the newscast. Or Thank you, Katie. Now to New York City, where essential workers are being honored today for their tireless work during the pandemic. But health experts are also warning that we are not completely out of the woods yet. ABC's Rita Roy with how quickly the Delta variant is spreading across the country now. New York City, once the U.S. epicenter of COVID-19, now one big celebration. New Yorkers taking to the streets in the hot summer sun to honor those who helped guide the city out of the pandemic, like registered nurse Justin Davis, who moved from Pittsburgh to help out at a Manhattan hospital last year. So to get on the canyon here, from what I hear, is it's a pretty big deal as a parade, and I'm glad it's for people that are selfless, that are helping. Sandra Lindsay, a Queens nurse who was first in the U.S. to get vaccinated back in December, leading the parade as Grand Marshal. Educators, grocery workers, plus the city's electric company employees also taking part. So it's something we've never imagined. It's like straight out of a horror movie, uh, but for us, we knew we still had to keep our lights, we had to keep the power going, keep the lights on. New York City depended on us. I was just really proud to be a part of it. We were on 12-hour shifts. Some days 
he's working four days a week. But as this area crawls its way out of the darkness, others with low vaccination rates still fighting an uphill battle. Mercy Hospital in Springfield, Missouri, with a worse surge than last winter. Nearly all the patients unvaccinated. Get vaccinated so that you don't see this. The Delta variant, now the predominant COVID strain in the U.S. The CDC estimating it accounts for more than half of all new cases across the country. More states seeing an increase rather than a decrease in cases. Hospital admissions climbing in 10 under-vaccinated states. Millions of Americans are still unvaccinated and unprotected. And because of that, their communities are at risk. But again, back here in New York City, as you can see, it is a big celebration with 68% of the adult population here in the city partially vaccinated. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And some states are trying a new way to get people to get their COVID vaccine shot. They're texting them. Researchers at the University of Pennsylvania found text messages about the flu vaccine increased vaccination rates by about 5%. The team tried nearly 20 messages. They found messages that told patients a vaccine was reserved or waiting for them performed the best. Researchers found text using humor didn't work as well. Now some health officials are hoping the same tricks will work in getting people vaccinated against COVID. Still ahead on the news at noon, there is a new indie film out there that blends action and romance. We're going to give you a first look at First Date. And Subway is looking to keep things fresh. We'll take a look at the changes they're making to their menu coming up in your consumer news. If you have a PC, you might not want to wait on your update. After the break, why Microsoft is urging user update users update their software immediately. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. This is your Daily Tech and Business Briefing from Cheddar News. The Pentagon moving to cancel its long-awaited Jedi cloud computing contract with Microsoft. The Defense Department says the $10 billion contract no longer meets their needs following advances in cloud technology. The project had led to years of competition between Amazon and Microsoft over which company would be awarded the job. The Pentagon tapped Microsoft for the contract, and then Amazon later filed a lawsuit over that decision. Meanwhile, social media app Nextdoor announcing on Tuesday they're going to go public via a SPAC. The deal with Closha Ventures acquisition will value the firm at $4.3 billion. The Nextdoor app was created in 2011 and allows users to organize local events, alert neighbors of danger, and even spread local business postings as well. And satellite imagery company Statologic announcing on Tuesday they too will go public via SPAC. The deal sponsored by Cantor Fitzgerald gives the space company a $1.1 billion valuation. Now it is expected to close early in the fourth quarter of this year and it'll trade over at the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol SATL. And that's Cheddar News, Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. And more consumer news for you. Microsoft urging its users to update their PCs immediately. The Windows developer says the threat is from something called Print Nightmare. It says researchers accidentally published a guide to exploiting it. The company says hackers could use it to install programs, delete data, and create new user accounts with full access to your machine. In fact, the threat is so severe, the company issued a patch for the 12-year-old Windows 7 more than a year after ending support for it. If you have automatic updates enabled, it's likely your PC has already downloaded the security update. And speaking of updates, in an attempt to attract more customers, Subway is making some changes to its menu, and it's the biggest changes they've ever done. The company says come next week, customers are going to be seeing new and old items on the menu. The multigrain and Italian breads are going to taste differently because they are using a new recipe. The topping is going to look different too. The, ba the bacon, I like this part, is going to be hickory smoked and turkey and ham will be sliced more thinly. Those who missed ordering rotisserie style chicken and roast beef, I'm one of them, will now be able to do so again. And here's the best part. Subway will be giving away up to a million free sandwiches on July 13th. Mark your calendar. It's from 10 to 12. 
But watch the salt, because we all want to stay in good health and too much salt can increase your blood pressure. Some simple food swaps can help you. With more, here's ABC's Elizabeth Schultze. 2300 milligrams or one teaspoon. That's the recommended maximum amount of daily salt intake. But many people far exceed this number. Researchers believe that at least 50% of people with high blood pressure may be detrimentally affected by sodium consumption. Sodium intake mainly comes from packaged and restaurant foods rather than from your salt shaker at home. The top five sources of salty foods include shrimp, soup, ham, instant pudding, and cottage cheese. So how can you change your behaviors? Opt for fresh caught shrimp without additives. Avoid canned soups unless they're reduced sodium. Stay away from full servings of ham and make your own vanilla pudding. Experts even say the act of rinsing cottage cheese underwater for three minutes can reduce the salt content by 63%. Since salt intake can lead to health problems, it's important to recognize what you're putting in your body. With this Medical Minute, I'm Elizabeth Schulze. Back outside with live cam, 79, what is today? It's July 7th. Yes. We haven't even come close to that, that number that we don't like to talk about. No. Uh, I mean, it's not even 80 degrees out there. Yeah. I know. Pretty wild for this time of year. Of course, it did come at a cost yesterday for those that live and have businesses around Leon Creek. And now the San Antonio River down from Elmendorf to Floresville, looking at a little bit of minor flooding today into tomorrow. And we're going to talk about that coming up in just a few minutes. Uh, the plus side of the rain, the aquifer loves it. It's up an inch and a half in the past 24 hours. But of course, with the rain comes higher counts of mold. Mold high today with a count of around 6,300. We'll get right to that river flooding forecast. Take another look at radar coming up shortly. Yeah, so this is a very unusual July. Yeah, um, very strange. And I'm, we're not complaining because no, 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 so no, no. far nobody's gotten hurt right. in in the rain. But man, it, it is nice to see July with a 79 degrees at noontime. Oh, we could already be racking up the triple digit days. I won't say the number. Oh, don't say that number. Don't say, no, that, number. Don't say that number. It's going to jinx it. And the aquifer is, is in good shape for July. I and mean, everything's working out well. It is. And I can't remember if I said the aquifer is up one and a half feet or one and a half inches. It's definitely in feet. I'm, we're thinking rainfall here, so we've got inches, but the aquifer is in feet. So just in case, a few minutes ago I said one and a half inches, it's up one and a half feet, and that is good. Now, let's talk about river flooding. The San Antonio River from Elmendorf down through Floresville approaching Falls City does have a flood warning until tomorrow. This is because we've got the river running out of Bear County downstream. Eventually, it wants to get down into the Gulf of Mexico. So this is the San Antonio River at Elmendorf. This morning, it looks like it crested right around 39 feet, which is just about moderate flood stage. For the rest of the day today, it's going to continue to receive seed. Now, this water that crested near Elmendorf, as it runs down to Floresville, this will likely cause some minor flooding along the San Antonio River near Floresville as we get into later in the day today and early tomorrow. I know there's a lot going on here with these graphics. These are produced by the River Forecast Center. You can find these graphics really easily by just Googling River Forecast Center, uh, but I'll also make sure that we share these on social media this afternoon if you want to take a closer look. I know there's some really tiny numbers on there, but just wanted you to be aware, aware that the San Antonio River down near Floresville expected to enter that minor flooding stage later today into the first part of the day tomorrow. Temperatures at this hour, 79 Rock Springs, 80 in Hondo, 84 in Catula. It is muggy across the board, but no big surprise with all the rain we've had around. And a look at our sustained winds. We've got a decent breeze across much of the area. Winds about 10 to 20 miles per hour all the way from Catula up to New Braunfels. Our wind direction is a bit variable across the area, but generally it's out of the northeast. That's because we're north of a surface low pressure system that is down near the Gulf Coast and Corpus Christi center of circulation almost right over Corpus Christi this afternoon. It is this low pressure system that's going to keep rain chances around and keep some potentially flooding rainfall 
down near the Gulf Coast today, really essentially through Friday. So walking you through future cast uh, this afternoon, some passing showers for us here in San Antonio, heavier, more widespread rain off and on down near the Gulf Coast will be possible today into tomorrow as well. You'll notice a few little spotty showers in and around San Antonio through tomorrow afternoon, a very similar story into Friday. It won't be until the weekend that that low really weakens and kind of gets stretched out, and that's when we'll start to see our rain chances drop off a bit. Just some spotty showers hours and afternoon storms as we get into the weekend and early next week. But today and for the next couple of days, a scattering of some showers will be possible at times. Things are pretty quiet here right now. We've got some showers moving in from the east, not picking up any lightning strikes. So this is going to be light to moderate rain and it's going to pass on by pretty quickly. Unfortunately, we're starting to see some dangerous flooding set up down closer to uh, the Gulf Coast there, uh, closer to the center of that surface low, which is near Corpus. And I don't like what I see here. So there's Rockport Fulton off into the Gulf of Mexico. We've got a radar signature. Basically, this is just we call it a fire hose because it's just a full on like drenching of heavy rain that essentially doesn't move. It doesn't go anywhere uh, because this surface low is just kind of moving very slowly down near the Gulf of Mexico. That is what has prompted a flash flood emergency for places like Rockport and Fulton. They're going to be under that until 245, so still about two more hours. That's what this heavy rain will do. So if you've got friends or family down near the coast, just make sure they're aware that as we head into the next couple of days, it's closest to the Gulf of Mexico areas that will see the potential for flooding. And in fact, today the risk for flooding or excessive rainfall is highest here. This bright pink color down closest to the Gulf of Mexico, but even some of our southeasternmost counties, B County up to Goliad, you are at a three. There are a moderate risk for flooding rain today and through Friday morning. Flash flood watches in place for some of our southeasternmost counties from Carnes County up to Hallettsville and then southeast. You could pick up another one to three inches of rain and some isolated totals for to six inches of rain through Friday morning. So we'll be here to keep you updated here in San Antonio today. A 30 to 40% chance of a passing shower this afternoon. Highs in the mid to upper 80s. We'll keep these pockets of heavy rain around through Friday and then a little bit of relief and also a little bit warmer as we get into the weekend, guys. All right, Katie, thank you. There's a new movie out in theaters right now. We're going to give you a first look as first date coming up in the spotlight. A new independent film currently in limited theatrical release and on video on demand aims for the energy of early Robert Rodriguez and Kevin Smith movies is described as both a romantic comedy and an action thriller. CNN's David Daniel has a look. When are you going to ask her out? What? When are you going to ask her out? First date seems at first to be just that as Mike calls up girl next door Shelby. Are you busy? <laughs> Do you want to hang out? Yeah. Pick me up at seven. But to do that, Mike needs wheels, and he's conned into buying an awful used car with, let's just say, a checkered past. We just thought it'd be really fun to throw as many obstacles in there as we could and delay the, the gratification of the date for as long as possible. Stuff must have been in there before it got the car. It's not mine. It's not his. It's ours. What? Young stars Tyson Brown and Shelby Duclo leaned into the action. Because I grew up, you know, as a kid watching all the action movies and seeing all the stunts. I'm like, I, I want to do that. <laughs> and seeing all the stuff that Mike has to go through and do in the film, I was just like, oh, this is going to be super fun. Where's the car? I don't have it. <laughs> something about watching a movie where you have no idea what's going to happen and just being along for the ride. I just hope that people have fun with it because it was so much fun to film. And I think for all of us, you know, it turned into a passion project. Just go outside your comfort zone, be outside your box for a minute and see what you're capable of. You never know. On a scale of one to ten, how much fun are you having right now? Uh, In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Looks like a good one. Yeah, it was just a fun movie. Yeah. All right, they're having fun over at SA Live, Jen and Fiona. Oh, sure yes. And Stephanie Garza with Pup Pup and Away joins us. Who have you got here? This is Rishi. She is my three-year-old rescue schnauzer. Okay, and you have got a great tip as far as 
what to do when your pets get scared during storms. Yeah, my biggest tip, if you know that storms are coming around, um, have an alternate potty spot ready for your dog. Mm -hmm. Don't force your dog to go outside yes. into the rain. That definitely could be an opportunity to make that nervous, scary time even more scary for forcing them to go into something. I'm always struggling with that, by the way. Yeah, my it's hard. Are, it's they hard. Don't want to go out during Some the rain. dogs just don't like for their feet to be wet, but also it's a lot of things. Great tip, and we have many more coming up as well. Plus, Aguas Frescas, if you want to make your own at home, we have somebody here that's going to show you some tips and tricks and also why his are so delicious. And oh. speaking of delicious, mm -hmm. things are getting peachy. Look at all these peaches from mm. Fisher and Weezer. We have two mm -hmm. recipes that are peach inspired and yes, they even have a peach wine. It's all about <laughs> the peaches today. <laughs> and it is a wild Wednesday, so of course, SeaWorld is in the house. We They have some fabulous feathered friends to show off. And we're gonna tell you about their concert series happening right now. Yes, and the animal that's coming has never been on SA Live before. Also, we'll tell you how you can join the Spurs hype squad. All that and more. When SA Live continues in just a few minutes.